take five. Disregarding actually uh, living in or near a war zone, how many times have you been into combat frontline position? Oh, thousands and thousands of times. Um, different days, if you put it that way. I mean, a, a time maybe uh, five minutes when you're under fire, but on different days, it would have to be thousands of times. Did you actually uh, get close enough to hear uh, what we regarded oh, yes. as, as the enemy soldiers talking to each other? Uh, not to each other, but they often called out. The Vietnamese, uh, North Vietnamese, or the Viet Cong would call out to the South Vietnamese troops. They swore a lot. <laughs> the huh? Vietnamese, particularly the South Vietnamese. That Any was quite funny, the exchanges. For instance, what would they say to each other? With uh, uh, Not repeatable on film, but I could say it in Vietnamese, but it was uh, generally down with the commun communist North Vietnamese, uh, da da da. Uh -huh. You, uh, I believe, used to drive to the war every, every day. That was in Cambodia, uh, because the fighting in Cambodia was along the highways, the major highways, of which there were seven going out from Phnom Penh, the capital. But in Vietnam, it was mainly in the jungle or in the paddy fields, off the main roads. But I drove to the war in Cambodia um, and came back each night. Was it literally a matter of jumping in your car? Yes, yes. Take any road was uh, was the... Uh, the cry at one time, take any road, and take any road was true, because in any one of those seven major highways, uh, you could find action. That was a rather flamboyant way to go to, to Warner in a Mercedes-Benz. It was the, yeah, well, <laughs> it was the only way to go, actually. Uh, you could perhaps uh, catch a troop convoy going out or something like that, but uh, uh, if you wanted to go under your own steam, it was by car. Mm. You say you lost a lot of friends, cameramen, journalists in the war. Yes. Well, total close friends, I suppose, 20 or 30. There were over 30 killed in Cambodia and 50 something, 50 or 60 total killed in Vietnam. I knew most of them, but close friends, 20 to 30. I imagine covering a war at such close quarters, uh, both life and death situations that you come across, you build up a very close rapport with a few people. Yes, yes you do, because uh, you're sharing the ultimate experience, I suppose. You're putting your life on the line, and they are too, so that uh, small things become of no moment. That doesn't matter at all. The only thing is to survive, and, uh, and uh, that's the idea with everybody. And a great camaraderie, a very close relationship is built up between correspondents and, uh, and with uh, the troops, if you get to know them well. Can you give me uh, one or two close friends that you had, what they meant to you? Um, well, of course, there was a Japanese photographer, Sawada, who was a Pulitzer Prize winner, that is, he won the prize for the best photographs of the year in 1965 or 66, I forget which. He was killed later in Cambodia. He was uh, to come and stay with me on the night he was killed, actually. He went out one day more than he had intended, and he was killed on the roads. Um, many others, three died, three of my close friends, died in a helicopter over, shot down over Laos when the Americans invaded southern Laos. Uh, that was the American Broadcasting Company? Well, uh, that, well one was, uh, that was Larry Bowers, a great Life magazine photographer, and Kent Potter was an American photographer for United Press International. Uh, one of my best friends is still alive, minus one leg, uh, Joe Lee, Joseph Lee, a Korean. And uh, we went out, I probably went out with Joe Lee more than any other person because we lived in Cambodia together and we had been, of course, in Vietnam together. How did uh, he lose his leg? He lost his leg, uh, ironically enough, after the Indochina War ended uh, when he was covering a very small action with Thai troops against communist insurgents in southern Thailand and uh, his sound man sat on a mine or fell on a mine in an action killed his sound man but blew Joe's left leg off. I believe he kept on filming. He kept on filming. He filmed his sound man dying and he filmed his own leg or what was left of it. Uh, were you or he wounded often? Or? Uh, yes, I was hospitalized I think six times. Joe about the same uh, number of times. Uh, of course there were my, many minor wounds but nothing much, just scratches and a little bit of blood from shrapnel and, and stuff like that. One period in Vietnam, and it's around about 73, 74, 70, mid-72 to mid-74, so, uh, 
he or I were in hospital or recovering from wounds for that whole time. I remember when I was, came back from hospital in Bangkok to Cambodia and Joe wasn't there to meet, uh, meet me. I was in plaster all one leg and part of another leg. And uh, they said, no, well, he can't, couldn't come to meet you. He was wounded yesterday, so I had to stump up in my plaster to see him in the, in the hospital. So for a period of two years, either you or he were wounded? Were wounded, yes. Mm -hmm. Fate plays a, a big part in a war, as you say, that Japanese uh, cameraman that was uh, shot one yes. day too long. Yes. Can you think of any instance where uh, it saved your neck? Well, very early in the Vietnam War, uh, was, I think the end of 1964, uh, there, was a, the, there was the first uh, big action in Vietnam. It, it involved several thousand troops. Before that, it had only involved one or two hundred troops. And 